Yeah, so unfortunately I did get sick on the zero G flight and I wasn't alone in that, but maybe I'm being a little bit too hard on myself. I interviewed the three astronauts who were on board our zero G flight, Nicole Stott, Doug Hurley, and moonwalker Charlie Duke about whether this is normal and maybe how I can adjust better in the future. Listen, I am not the first person to get sick on a zero G flight and definitely would not be the first person to get sick in space. It's actually a normal thing and going through that experience gives me a lot more appreciation and respect for those who have to endure that adjusting to the ISS and doing these parabolic flights and research experiments. So I'm going to break up my zero G experience into two parts. Part one will be this video where I'm going to share interviews with astronauts who have veteran experience in this field. I even interviewed Doug Hurley's son who has parents that are both astronauts yet he still got sick so I'm definitely not alone. Doug Hurley and Nicole Stott both have many hours in the space saddle, but during the zero G flight, they were able to experience lunar gravity for the first time. So I'm a newbie. You guys are not. Uh, how was it today for you? Well, it brought back a lot of memories. I mean, the last time I did this was our astronaut candidate flight back in 2000 or 2001. Yeah. Wow. So, and we got to do about 60 parabolas. So even that gets a little, that's a long day, I think, for people, but we had the whole KC-135, we're dating ourselves to it, uh, but um, yeah. anyway, it was fun. Yeah, it's just, it's always fun to experience zero G, and and then the moon gravity, never done that before, because we didn't that's do a, that. Really? Yeah, yeah we, we didn't do that, we just did the pure Oh, what did you so. think of it? it? It felt cool, yeah. It almost felt even lighter than one six. Yeah. Well, it was. It's like people were a little bit more in control. Mm -hmm. I thought. You know, right. As soon as we got a zero G, everybody's all over the place. I asked them how our zero G experience differed from being in the ISS. Well, you got to be a lot more careful about hitting stuff. Right. And your crewmates will get cranky at you if you mm -hmm. run if you run into them a lot. And it's a little bit more confined. Not a lot more, but a little bit more. Um, ISS is a pretty big space, but having a giant inside of the fuselage padded of an aircraft is is pretty nice. Right. I know you've flown with SpaceX. Is zero G training something that SpaceX astronauts need to do? No, I, I think what we did is uh, when we first flew on shuttle before our first flights, we would do um, a centrifuge mm -hmm. and that would be more of the profile of the launch uh, of shuttle mm -hmm. and then we did um, SpaceX, we did something very similar. We did a centrifuge run mm -hmm. rather than, you know, the microgravity stuff is like everybody's going to eventually adjust to it and figure it out for themselves. So it's yeah. great if you get an opportunity to do a, like this type of flight, but it's not. It's not required for, per se. Do you guys feel like sick at all? No. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. But it's funny, you know, um, Doug mentioned the one familiarization flight that astronauts get, you know, NASA astronauts Very early in training. On. Yeah. Early on, and, and it's, I think it really and truly is meant as like a familiarization. Right. A, even kind of a, a bonding thing, yeah. you know, Because you the have group. the plane to yourself. It's yeah. just your class, wow. and we but have the whole plane to ourselves. It's funny, yeah. though, because I think there's this general perception that astronauts are getting on this airplane all the time yeah. right. to learn what it's like to be in space, and we're doing training there, and we're not. Yeah, you know, it's the last get, time I ever got on a zero-g airplane. You get one. Until wow. now. Yeah. And, and there's things yeah. you can go, like I was. Real, I went and volunteered for like a research right. flight. Or, right. you know, if you're working out there, you can get on the plane when they're doing proficiency flights. But as far as the astronaut corps itself, do you, you get one. Do you think that time, like at the neutral buoyancy lab, is way more valuable than zero-g training? Uh, I, well, yeah, with respect to the tasks that you're going to be you're doing. Because you're learning spacewalks. Space yeah. Yeah, so that all yeah. those skills are... That's, I mean, yeah. 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 That's a lot... Yeah, you can figure out the zero-G stuff when you get to orbit. And you'll figure it. Some people are bulls in China shops, and they're not going to change. Uh, but usually, like on ISS, as yeah, an ISS just, crew you member, just you just get, your body gets much more efficient. You know how much to push off. You know, you're not doing that. Because everybody's reaction in zero-G is to push off way too hard right, for right. the environment. Right. And you just get to the point where you're almost like this 
It's like a ballet. Yeah, it really is. You become very efficient. You watch people like go through the ISS and they like put one hand on a handrail and it pivots 90 degrees to go this way. They don't hit anything. They don't touch anything. Right. They don't waste any movement. And it's it's really when you're a shuttle crew member, you're really envious of those folks that have been <laughs> up there because they're like everybody in shuttles banging around for the first few days and then you get it's a very graceful yeah, it, it, it is it is amazing i mean just like i think about almost everywhere i go now i think about it at some point like wow if i wanted to in space i could just like tap this just and just I could move up just, to the ceiling, just lift roll, my toes and i could go right move to the ceiling in three dimensions how yeah. that just becomes a natural thing for you yeah. and now i don't know about you doug but i watch you in space or I yeah. watch somebody else I'm like living vicariously through it but I feel like my body and my brain know and understand it and it doesn't seem like something completely no. foreign now and no. I do think the zero-g flights give you a little bit of what like um, they tease you I yeah. think right. a little bit just to that. wow what would this feel like if I could just keep going right yeah. right just, just a little yeah. taste I would imagine it's, it gets it's gorgeous better if you can keep going right it does on this well and that's that's <laughs> the thing that's hard about on people about the the zero-g flight that that we did today is you're doing two G's zero G two G's zero G and it remember that and, and, oh, yeah. and for it, it's just hard for your did it make an impression <laughs> yeah, your vestibular system doesn't yeah. necessarily like that no, very yeah. much no, and I think that's unfortunately <laughs> or fortunately that's what happens to a lot of folks when we get to space it, and it takes a day or two for folks their vestibular system the fluid shift all the stuff that physiologically happens to you yeah. It just takes a day or two, and most people adjust, and it's like they've they've been there their whole lives. Your your body is amazing how quickly it adjusts. And then I don't know if you notice this, but like multiple flights in space, your body remembers faster. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's both we, directions, going up and coming back. It's really, and, and really so like, cool. Your body's like, oh yeah, I've been here before. So I would bet you, if you did this again, right. you would feel better. I do think so. Yeah, I do it, think yeah. so. And I know, yeah. I know you're a little skeptical now, but yeah. I really do I, think I that do would think be the so. case. Yeah. yeah. Um, and your 14-year-old son, first yeah. time. Yeah, he got what to go. What was that like watching him? Uh, I was, I just was so excited for him to get to experience it to some degree. Yeah. I think he, you know, he enjoyed about half of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then he started not feeling great. So, uh, but his mother. Also, a former astronaut had the same exact experience. Really? When she did, and then the ironic thing is, she went to space. Nothing. Felt great. That's Felt great. So she was eating food, and there were fighter pilots in the front seat of the shuttle puking, and she's eating an apple. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. And that, so I think that's has, one of the weirdest it, things. It's just nothing everybody's about the way your body behaves down every, here predisposes yeah. you. Yeah. To what so you're gonna, I shouldn't everybody. write off space. Do not. Absolutely do not. <laughs> Absolutely do not. And if you go, take us with you. Yeah. 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 Do you guys want to go back? Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, if it worked out, yeah. I'd yeah. like to take the whole family, though. Yeah. That's the deal now. Yeah. So. How far away are we from, you know, commercial space tourism for the whole family? Well, it's hard to believe we've, we've just in the last 10 years, what we've done right. commercially, yes. privately. Right. So I, it can't be too long. Right. I mean, I, I think, think the so. challenge is just making it affordable right. for all of us rather than, you know, for countries and for agencies and that kind of thing. How so. different, you know, because between shuttle and flying with SpaceX on Dragon, how different is it? Night and day. Yeah, night and day. I mean, and and even the vehicles that, right? are night and day. That's what I mean. Vehicles right. are night and day. Um, you know, you got to remember NASA still has a, uh, the majority of, uh, of an ISS mission is still right. mostly under NASA's purview. Right. Um, with ISS and all that, you know. So once you get close enough to the ISS, it's NASA flight controllers, and then, right. and then the SpaceX folks handle you as you launch and get into orbit, and then bring you home. So, um, you know, it, it it was different in that sense and the way SpaceX does business. But you know, in some ways they do it better, in some ways NASA does it better, and so right. it's just, you know, it, it's just. What, what amazes me is just we're almost four years removed from my flight, and now we've flown double-digit crews in space on, right. on SpaceX, on Dragon. And so. we got Crew 8, oh, yeah, crew eight. friends getting ready to fly again next yeah. week. Yeah. What do you guys miss the most about space? Uh, the view. And then I think the other thing is just, I mean, just being part of a crew. 
yeah. you know, that crew experience is just, it's pretty special, you know. Floating in front of the window is, there's yeah. something you just yeah. can't. Yeah. I, I can mean, do I try that to recreate, but you can't recreate it. But the, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think in, in most cases, like even today, it's like, yeah, you know, the, but just the experience you have with other people Shared and experience. seeing how they yeah. are responding to it or what it brings to the whole group together. And I mean, you know, you think about Space Station, holy moly, you know, 15, 16 countries for over 20 years, somehow peacefully and successfully working together as one crew. And you, you feel that while you're there. Yeah. Right. Oh, so sure. it's, I mean, I get goosebumps. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a really, really special thing. And it's such a wonderful example for how we should be behaving yeah. like the crewmates down here. The rest of the world uh, <laughs> needs to take a lesson. On our little planetary spaceship. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, really quick, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Private Internet Access. One of the best ways to use a VPN is for watching Netflix. That's because streaming services like Netflix have different libraries options based on where you're located. And some shows you just won't be able to access unless you're in the right location, unless of course you're using a VPN. Private internet access will help you to overcome this restriction and you can change your IP address to one of 91 countries and choose from all 50 US states. This will give you access to websites and services without limitations, Plus, having a VPN actually keeps you more secure. Free Wi-Fi, like many of us use at a Starbucks or the airport, is extremely open and vulnerable. You don't want your personal information stolen, so you can avoid this by using private internet access. This will safeguard your internet connection through an encryption tunnel, which will protect you against those looking to exploit private information. Private internet access also has a no-log policy that was proven in court. So what exactly does this mean? Well, they don't store any personal personal data about you, and private internet access is available for all platforms from your phone to your computer. Plus, you can use one subscription to protect unlimited devices. Signing up is risk-free, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, and 24-7 customer support. You can also use the link in the description of this video to get 83% off plus four months for free. So I'm now using it. I'm really glad that I have it. I think the thing that will benefit me the most is I do use free Wi-Fi a lot. So I'm glad that this will help keep my information more secure. And thanks again to Private Internet Access to sponsoring today's video. So this was your first time doing Zero G. Yep. Your dad is uh, somewhat of an expert. How yeah. was it for you? Um, for the first couple, uh, waves or whatever you call them. Yeah, I was doing pretty good, and then just the re repetition of it, I got kind of got motion sick. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily the G's or the negative G's. It's like the transition, right. and the transition was really quick, and it was really yes. difficult to yes. like not get sick. <laughs> I was in the same boat. Yeah. Would you ever want to do it again? Not, not in the next week or so, but right. yeah, in I'm, the future I'd maybe like to try it again. Yeah. So seeing your dad go to space, you know, fly with SpaceX, does that? I mean, what is that like to have a dad who's like an astronaut? Well, it's not really like since it's so normal, it's like you don't really like pause to think about it very often. So it's not really out of the ordinary for me yeah. but it's really cool which, and your mom is too right Yeah, my mom is too oh my gosh and does that mean you you have to follow in their footsteps or are you are you even interested not i don't i don't want to be an astronaut necessarily but maybe aviation okay interesting. i'm still not um haven't really decided what i'm gonna do yeah well, you got a long time. Yeah, I've got a lot. Is there any like cool space stories or like, you know, something that stands out to you about your dad's career? Well, it, it's I like um the stories he tells about like fighter pilot or being a fighter pilot. Interesting. Cuz that if I were to go into aviation, that's what I'd want to do is fly, right. fly jets and stuff. It's really yeah. cool. So And someone who was not new to the sensation of lunar gravity is Apollo moonwalker Charlie Duke. All right. Um so I'm a newbie. You're a veteran. How was it today? Well, it's my fourth time on this CRG airplane and it was fun. We had a good time. Uh, no broken bones or anything like that. Everybody have a good time just spinning around. There, so, there was some puke. I did throw up. 
Oh, you More did. than once. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that. I'm wondering, do you feel um, sick at all, or? No, not on these flights I don't. But when really? I got back, when I on uh, Apollo 16, when I got into space uh, after launch and we shut down, the other two guys just unstrapped and pitched right out, and they started doing their. And I and I was, and I said, man, I don't feel too good. I don't. Like, I don't think I ought to move my head around too right. much. Fortunately, my job was just sitting there copying stuff from Houston. Okay, and so interesting. It, and I felt unusual mm -hmm. for about an hour. Then it went away, and I never had any more problems. So. Well. A lot of people know this about you. You've walked on the moon. No big deal. How was the lunar gravity today on the Zero-G? Uh, it was close. Yeah. It was close. Yeah, uh -huh. And uh, you could still, you, even in one six gravity, if you jump too far, you, you get way off the yes. ground. You don't want to bounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bounced on the moon with my stuff thrown in there. I, I lost my balance and I went over backwards, <laughs> which is really scary. Really? Well, well the back, that's your yeah. life support system back there on your back. Yeah. If it breaks, you're dead. So, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, I made the right decision and rolled right and broke my fall and I was okay. Wow. And so, I, I, that's just so crazy that you are, you, you've walked on the moon. Like, I can't believe I'm talking to someone who's done that. It's... Well, there's only four of us I was going to say, well, there's only four left, but still not even many people that have done that, period. Uh, Twelve of us. Still so we just had the I am one intuitive machines, lunar lander, success. What is that? Are you excited about that? I am excited about it. I think it's about time we get back to the moon. And, yeah. uh, you know, they've been working on... Uh, it started out uh, Artemis, and uh, we've been working on that for a long time. And so I'll be really delighted. Hope I'm still alive when we have uh, the space station beginning to be built up on the moon. I think it's work. It's time. It's time for a, a return to the moon. Why do you think it's taken so long? Uh, money. Uh, NASA spent all the money on space shuttle, yeah. and they made a decision. We learned a lot about the moon, but we want to explore Earth orbit more. With uh, and we're going to use the space shuttle to put up telescopes and other experiments. And so it was a transportation system in and out of orbit that turned out not as cheap as they thought. Uh, and then finally, the uh, uh, the, the uh, space, they wanted to build space stations. So all the money went to near Earth orbit. But now I see us. Uh, NASA focusing on deep space like Artemis and maybe onto the Mars and uh, the SpaceX and others like that taking over more of the commercial side of, of space. Would you go to Mars? No, I wouldn't. Even when you were young, you wouldn't have gone to Mars? Oh uh, well, yeah, I would have, I think, but that wouldn't. I didn't want a one-way trip. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And you kind of are signing up for that. Yeah. You have to it's really, that. Uh, it's a long way, and it's uh, it's a dangerous mission. It's uh, you got to have a spacecraft that's really reliable because once you leave Earth orbit and you're on your way to Mars, it was. Uh, you're on your own. Yeah. You know, you can't call Houston and say, Houston, send up another widget because this one broke. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Right. Uh, you're, you're on your own. So. Did you feel like going to the moon was a dangerous mission, too? No. Really? <laughs> well, we were so successful. Uh, right. We uh, landed Apollo 11 with uh, seconds of fuel remaining. and. Uh, uh, we overcame uh, the explosion from Apollo 13, and uh, it was just really a, uh, a, a series of missions that I call uh, Mission Control had uh, a great help, and they were the heroes of Apollo because they fixed a lot of stuff that got us back. Now, we had a major problem on Apollo 16 that almost prevented our landing on the moon, but they came up with a solution. And uh, so it was, uh, so Apollo was just really, really successful. We had a lot of confidence. You know, we were three days away. We had instant communications. 
And so if something went wrong, we thought we would be okay and they would get us out of it. I didn't have any, never had a doubt that I was going to get back. I did have a doubt that I was not going to land, and that was going to be very disappointing. Right. Training two years and then not getting to land. Right. But it all worked out. Wow. What do you miss the most about space? Uh, I, I think the adventure. You know, even you, even up on the moon, you've been there three days, and you wonder what's over the next ridge. You know, you right. what are you going to see next? Right. So it's the adventure of being there. Man, I'm on the moon. You know, you never got over that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy. What do you what do you say to all the people that say it's fake? Uh, the evidence is overwhelming. Uh, you have just not. If uh, first off, I ask them why don't you believe it, and they can't come up with. I just don't believe it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they look at the data, they look at the photographs, if they look at all of the uh, records, uh, it's overwhelming evidence that we went to the moon. Yeah. And. Uh, there were 400,000 people working on Apollo, and for 50 years, nobody's... Right, spilled the beans. Spilled the beans. That'd be a big secret to keep. Yeah, really, <laughs> really. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Charlie, and I'm so glad you were able to go on the flight. Thank you very much. I had a great awesome. time. We both won this flight through Moon Dow, uh, so I want to know what you know you thought of it oh um, of course it was amazing and I didn't expect that the moon gravity would be uh, it, it, you wouldn't wait so much it's crazy and for me since I'm in space resources and we are now studying how to mine the moon I just imagine how hard it will be to actually construct something you know mine I was like wow we're we need to do so much work so it's really inspiring me yeah, I kind of like the lunar a little bit more yeah. for some reason. Me too. <laughs> really? Interesting. Did anything <laughs> surprise you about it? Uh, yeah, I thought uh, it would be easier actually like to walk and it, you wouldn't wait so less. Yeah, Because right. for me it didn't feel like six times less, I felt almost like a zero G. Yeah, but still, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. What do you think of the zero G? It's amazing, but um, whenever you don't touch anything, how to move, right? Yeah. Right. So you like you're thinking uh, you're just there in this kind of um, abyss. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so how you would move yourself, uh, and now you understand even more. Uh, you know all these uh, sci-fi movies. Yes. When someone's stuck in uh, outer space and he cannot do anything. I know you wanted to do some research. Were you yeah. able to accomplish that? Unfortunately, no, because we switched to Florida to Kennedy Space Center location and they have uh, restrictions. Oh. And I couldn't be, you know, I, I wasn't able to bring my experiments. So oh. for me, it's sad. Yeah. You think you'll do it again someday? I hope. Awesome. I hope. For me, it wasn't enough. I, I've got to get my passcode in here first. <laughs> you wore Apple Vision Pro doing zero G. Yes. That's nuts. Yeah. But it was passed through, so I could see everything fine. So it's almost like I wasn't wearing them. And the thing is, remember in zero G, these things don't weigh as much as right. they do with down here. So it wasn't as uncomfortable as normal. You really didn't feel sick from it? No, not at all. That's hard for me to believe. I know. Well, see, think about it. This is vomit-inducing, right? Yeah. And then also the airplane is vomit-inducing. Oh, oh, it was Yeah, so you, you, you think it'd be double. But remember, two negatives make a positive. Right, OK. <laughs> Well, okay, so. I've never tried it. Can I try it? Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the thing about this is that we the tracking didn't quite work effectively in there. So the, like, the lunar landscape that I wanted to have didn't quite work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in on the lunar landscape right okay. now. So I have that already set up. Okay. You're going to have a little passcode you have to do here. Okay. Now, you, is it asking you to push the bezel? Yeah, push the bezel. Whoops. And it will calibrate to your eyes. It's this button here. Is it? Did you get the check mark? Yes. Okay. Enter passcode? Yes. Do you see the moon? Yes. Now, what I can do is that you, you see, only see the moon, right? I mean, I see you. Do you not see me now? Yes, I don't. Now it's just the moon. What the hell? See now? <laughs> oh my yeah, God. yeah, exactly. So, so what happens is I, I can break into the landscape. If I get too close, yeah. that means it, it kind of saves you from it. <laughs> now, the other thing you can do is this little bezel up here. If I dial it down, you see, you only see a little bit of the moon and you see most of the environment. And then if we go this way, you are fully immersed. Now that is the experience I wanted to have because on the zero G flight, it wasn't all zero G. We had lunar gravity for three Damn. parabolas. And the only problem is the landscape wouldn't stay fixed because the tracking mode didn't work. Why did the tracking mode not work? It didn't work because there's an IMU in there 
which is telling through acceleration is figuring out where you actually are in space. And when gravity suddenly goes upside down and does crazy things, IMU loss of tracking. Okay, so this is really cool seeing the moonscape, but let me see what it just looks like without. Without the, moon, yeah. the moonscape. Just so like, because I've never done back, one of these. Now it's completely without the moonscape. The okay, landscape, right? so what can I do with this? Okay. Um, it's actually not completely off. It's not completely off, it's still there a little bit. Yeah, now so, it's off. Okay, now it's off, so now, now it's full pass through. So that's basically what I was seeing. So what do I do with it? Okay, now what you can do is if I do this, now apps come up. Do you okay. see an app come yes. up? So you can see it, so you can see like Apple TV, anything else in there, and you can start. Well, now, I have white sands. Now, oh, I'm in. Okay, you're in the environment, so you're you're changing the different environments right yeah, now. Yeah, how do I get? Now, th there's two ways you can do it. You can either poke it like you did there, or you can just look at it with your eyes. Because if your eyes dance around, do you see the menus that are there? Yeah. As your eyes dance around looking at something, you notice they kind of get a little bit bigger yeah. in the highlight. Now, that you're using your eyes as a cursor. Now, what we need is a mouse clicker, right? The mouse yeah. clicker is your fingers. So bring your fingers, and you don't have to stretch your fingers out. The fingers, if they're right where they are, basically below the camera, and then you can go ahead, you can do something like that. What oh, the, what are you doing? This is so there. hard. Okay, use going? your finger like that. Click your fingers like this. Okay, now I'm in mouse. Yes, hood. so look at it, and then all you have to do is that with your finger. You don't have to poke at it. Okay, so how do I get, like, what is, what am, what do I want this for? Is it just to be fully immersed in like Part of it is to be immersed. an artificial environment? You, you, can, you can also bring in a lot of different windows at the same time. I want Jonathan to try it. Okay, there we go. Give it a try. I would not try that. <laughs> I mean, the, it is it's fully immersive, but I don't know what else you would use it for. Um, that's starting to be figured out. So you'll want to stick around for part two because that's where I'll have the full GoPro footage from the Zero G team. And I will be giving you probably the most in-depth review you've ever seen on Zero G, what to actually expect during your flight, what your body goes through mentally and physically, and some tips that I think will really help you if you choose to do this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Ellie in Space. And if you really liked it, please consider checking out my Patreon and supporting my channel that way. That will help me continue to take trips like this and make awesome, inspiring space content for you at home.